This is News 4 at 6 from the News Channel in Central Ohio. Good evening, everyone. They are calling it Gateway, a new stadium and state-of-the-art sports arena in Cleveland. But it couldn't go up until the last of the office buildings on the site came down. This storage building was the last thing to go. Now construction can begin on the arena and stadium that will be home to the Cleveland Indians baseball team and the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. It will take thousands of truckloads to remove the building's remains. The total cost of the stadium and arena project will reach $400 million. Well, I guess our January weather break has lasted long enough. Winter is coming back. Right, and with a vengeance, we January thaw, I guess, for about the first week and a half almost two weeks of January, but we are going to have some of the worst winter weather we've had in a long time over the next few days. Not tomorrow, but starting on Tuesday. Well, we're due. Right, so <laughs> if you have errands to run and, and other things that need to be done the next few days, do it tonight or tomorrow, and that way you'll be in much better shape. Our weather school question, we now see how many daylight hours? Nine and a half, 11, or 12? We'll have the answer shortly. Right now, 37 degrees. We had a light mixture of rain, sleet, and snow that is mainly light rain and drizzle now, gradually ending, a kind of a harbinger of things to come. Humidity 78%, southwest wind at 8, barometer 2996. But temperatures will remain above freezing all night long, so do not worry about the precipitation we have now. We will worry, though, about what comes in late Monday night and Tuesday. Here's the overview on satellite. This is our rainy weather maker. This was part of a system that was over Baja, California for days and days late last week. Kind of got the boot as another system came down from the northwest, down the west coast. And this big winter storm, already we have 6 to 12 inch snow accumulations in the mountains of northern Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. And this storm will be unleashing its fury on the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and Northeast over the next couple of days as it lifts to the north and east. And another storm is visible, a fairly strong one, coming into the Pacific Northwest. Now, as we put the clouds in motion, you can see the moisture sliding up in our direction, the bright rain clouds coming through. The other cloud, this huge comma cloud, is the next storm waiting in the wings. Major changes in the jet stream. The polar vortex is going to start pushing farther and farther south. We haven't had this this winter except for a brief time in November and early December, and that mainly affected the northern tier of states. This time, the entire eastern half of the country will be plunging into midwinter conditions, finally, by about midweek. In fact, the storm track from the Pacific Northwest, instead of coming into California, will now have to loop way over western Canada, so that will shut down the rains from California to Texas. Good news for Texas, they had another two inches of rain in Houston overnight. This cold front, and everything is timing, will be coming through Monday night, the Arctic front right behind it Tuesday morning. At the same time, a storm tracks to near Memphis, Tennessee tomorrow night, and to near Pittsburgh or Zanesville, somewhere in this vicinity by Tuesday morning. If the cold air gets in by early Tuesday morning, we will quickly turn to heavy snow. We will be right on the edge of heavy snow and a lot of rain. We will get mainly rain, though, tomorrow and tomorrow night before the cold air finally gets in. Temperatures will be in the 40s tomorrow, so we're starting on the mild side. That will diminish our chance for heavy snow because we will lose a lot of the precipitation as rain initially. Western Ohio seems to be the best bet for a large snowfall, but it's going to be so close, a 50-mile shift in the storm track, Either way, could put us into a heavy snow pattern on Tuesday with strong winds. And that's not out of the question by any means as the storm tracks north and east. And by Tuesday, we should be all snow with that cold air wrapping around. So let's talk about the forecast. And we will have more on the storm tonight at 11 as we get additional weather data. Light rain moving off to the east. Temperatures will hold nearly steady with southerly breezes overnight. So do not worry about any difficult travel, just wet roads and a few slippery spots for Monday. Again, just a rain day. Most of the rain will be later on, a high of 43. The rain will start to turn to snow in the evening in northwest Ohio, Toledo by 8 o'clock, Dayton around midnight. And then we will turn to snow around rush hour Tuesday. The quicker it turns, the more we get. And then Wednesday, 23, Thursday, a high of 19. We plunge into winter. And again, travel conditions could really be bad on Tuesday. We'll have more tonight at 11. But get your activities, your errands, all those things in. Fill up the gas tank tomorrow because we will be in the single digits later in the week for overnight lows. We now see uh, how many hours of daylight? I, th I still think it's only about nine and a half. And you're absolutely right. We bottom out around a little over nine hours of daylight around the 20th of December. And an hour but the days are hours. getting longer. They will so. get longer in a hurry, and by mid-March, about 12 hours of daylight. Okay. Thanks, Ben. 
The Bills are headed to the Super Bowl for the second year in a row. Douglas Ells has that and a great night in Japan for a Buckeye. Stay with us. Good day for Buffalo, but it seemed like it took a long time to get any scoring at all in that game. Yeah, it was uh, over 30 minutes, as a matter of fact. And David Treadwell, who is Denver's kicker, knows how Scott Norwood felt last year, and he doesn't feel very good. Last year, Scott Norwood missed a field goal that would have given the Bills their first Super Bowl championship. Today, Norwood made the kick that gives Buffalo another trip to the Super Bowl. Let's go to Rich Stadium up in Orchard Park, New York. The Bills and the Denver Broncos in the AFC Championship game. Buffalo coach Marv Levy is pumped. So is the Bills defense. Cornelius Bennett swallows up Gaston Green. Green again, eaten up this time by Leon Seals. The Broncos defense equally stifling. Ron Holmes bats Jim Kelly's pass into the air. Greg Cragen gets the interception. David Treadwell, 47-yard field goal. It's long enough. Is it good? No. Wide left, says Bennett. Treadwell from 42 yards. It's going right. Did that ball hit the upright and bounce out? It sure did, says Bruce Smith. Treadwell from 37 yards. Did that one hit the right upright too? I don't think we want to hear what Denver coach Dan Reeves said. Would anyone score in this game? Not in the first half. It was zip, zip at intermission. It figured the defense would put the first points on the board. Third quarter, Jeff Wright knocks John Elway's pass to Carlton Bailey. Seven zip bills. Fourth quarter now, Scott Norwood hits a 44-yard field goal. You know, that ended up being the difference. Elway left with a bruised thigh. His backup, Gary Kubiak, who announced his retirement last week, scores with under two minutes to play. Denver trails 10 to 7. Broncos go for the onside kick. It works. Steve Atwater recovers for Denver. The Broncos with one last chance. Kubiak hits Steve Sewell, but Sewell fumbles. Buffalo recovers, and the Bills go to the Super Bowl 10 to 7. They wanted it just as bad as we did. I guess uh, the home field advantage took care of itself when we needed it. And I'll tell you what, when Carlton intercepted that one, the whole offense was saying, please get into the end zone. This is probably the, the best team that we played all year. Uh, we knew it was going to go down to the wire, but, but we knew we had to play 64 minutes, and uh, we'd come out on top one way or another. All right, uh, let's take a look at the other game, the NFC Championship, Washington hammering Detroit, so it looks like it will be the Redskins and the Bills in Super Bowl 26. If you didn't stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning to see it on ESPN, you missed Ohio State Scotty Graham playing a big role in last night's Japan Bowl. Graham's East team trailed the West 13 zip after three quarters. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Graham, a fullback for the East, watch the nice pass blocking, which enables Tennessee quarterback Andy Kelly to step up into the pocket and hit Alabama Saran Stacy. Stacy turns it into a 15 yard gain and a first down at the West 16. Graham with a good run blocking helps Stacy pick up seven more. And from the nine, Graham gets the call. He bulls into the end zone. The East is within six, 13 to seven. A lot of Big Ten players figuring in this game. Matt Rogers of Iowa. He's the West quarterback. He's picked off at midfield by Michigan linebacker Eric Anderson. The East back in business. Third and two. Give it to who? Scotty Graham, of course. He picks up the first down. From the West 18, Scotty gets seven more yards and another first down. Graham says, I sincerely hope all the pro scouts here are taking notice. I'm sure they were. Less than three minutes to play. Alabama's Kevin Turner leaps tall lineman in a single bound. We are tied at 13. Carlos Huerta of Miami, who missed one extra point in all oh, about 140 attempts at Miami. You knew he wasn't going to miss that one. East over West, 14-13. College hoops today. The Lady Buckeyes hosting Wisconsin. Chris Gent on hand, signing some autographs before the Lady Bucks. I hope uh, he'll bring one back for Colleen. Second half. Elijah Bond feeds Erica Floyd for two, but the Lady Bucks trail Wisconsin by eight. Then Bond to Abel Roberts for the lay-in. Roberts will hit from three-point land, but Coach Nancy Darsh wouldn't like how this one turns out. Kim Martin will hit for the Badgers, and Wisconsin wins it 90-79. Last night in figure skating, Christy Yamaguchi won her first national championship after three straight second-place finishes. Nancy Kerrigan takes second, followed by Tanya Harding. Those three will represent the U.S., in next month's Winter Olympics. IndyCar driver and now IndyCar owner, Bobby Rahal of Dublin is preparing for the upcoming season with his new team, Rahal Hogan Racing. Rahal has spent the past few months doing owner type work, like getting the team's new Chevy powered car and find, signing a four year contract with sponsor Miller Beer. This week, Bobby turns to his other job as driver when the team goes to Texas and Phoenix to test the new car and get ready for the first race of the season, March 22nd in Australia. It's exciting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's exciting. Handle it. 
and we'll be back in just a minute. how neighbors help keep the Northeast Side woman alive. Also tonight, a homeless couple meets at a homeless shelter, and that's where they got married today. We'll take you to their wedding. Super Bowl 26 is set. It will be Buffalo and Washington. Here's Ben. The clouds have brought us rain and sleet earlier today, or sleet late this afternoon, are moving away, but a major winter storm is brewing in the southwest. Snow and wind for Tuesday. 